Any graph has a vertex coloring. You might be a theoretical mathematician if your first question is, does a graph have a K coloring? You might be a discrete mathematician if your first question is, how many K colorings does a graph have? Let's explore this question. For example, let's try to find the number of five colorings of K4. Since every vertex in K4 is connected to every other vertex, each vertex has to be assigned a different color. Now remember we're looking at a five coloring, and so the first vertex can be any one of the five colors. The second vertex can be any one of the remaining four colors. The third vertex can be any one of the remaining three colors. And the last vertex can be any one of the remaining two colors. So the number of colorings is... So mathematicians like to put functions on things, so let g be a graph. The number of t colorings of g can be expressed by a chromatic function, f sub g of t. And our previous result can be generalized to the following. If our graph is kn, then f sub g of t is... Now this is a polynomial, but note that the factors of this polynomial look like the factors of a factorial, and so this is sometimes referred to as the descending factorial polynomial. So let's find the chromatic function for kn complement. Remember kn complement consists of n isolated points. If there are t colors available, each point can be assigned any color, so there are t to the n possible colorings, giving us a chromatic function. We can also find that if g is a tree with n vertices, the chromatic function is... And based on three examples, we might suspect the chromatic function is in fact a polynomial function. To prove this, we need to introduce the idea of an edge contraction. Given a graph, we can contract an edge by merging the incident vertices. Any edge connected to one of the vertices remains connected to the merged vertex. This might also cause us to merge edges as well. Since we know the chromatic function for Kn, and any graph G on n vertices is a subgraph of Kn, let's see if we can find a relationship between the chromatic function of Kn and that of G. Since G must be a subgraph of Kn, we can build Kn by adding edges to G. Consider two non-adjacent vertices U and V in G. The colorings of G are of two types, those where U and V have different colors, and those where U and V have the same color. If u and v have different colors, we can put an edge between them to produce a new graph g prime. I note that any coloring of g where u and v have different colors will also be a coloring of g prime. If u and v have the same colors, we can put an edge between them and contract to produce a new graph g star. And again, any coloring of G where U and V have the same colors will also be a coloring of G star. Since every coloring of G is a coloring of exactly one of G prime or G star, then the chromatic function of G will be the chromatic function of G prime plus the chromatic function of G star. And note that we produce two graphs a graph with the same number of vertices, but one more edge, and a graph with one fewer vertex. So lather, rinse, repeat, until we get a set of complete graphs. Since the chromatic function for Kn is always a polynomial, this means the chromatic function is a polynomial for all graphs. 
So let's find the chromatic polynomial for G, the graph of K4, with one edge removed. So the chromatic polynomial for G will be the sum of the chromatic polynomials of G with one edge added, which gives us K4, and G with one edge added and contracted along the new edge, which gives us K3. And we know the chromatic polynomials for K4 and K3, and so this will be 